How's it going everyone and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mike Starr. In today's video, I'll be going through my top 12 favorite hillbilly horror films of all time, ranking them from the best to the very best. Starting off with the first title being the 70s Wes Craven film of the original The Last House on the Left. Now this is a disturbing movie about rape, redemption, and uh, yeah, they, they remade this film in 2009. This one was better written, but the other one was a bit more entertaining in my opinion, but they're both well-made films and uh, yeah, rest in peace, uh, Wes Craven. This is just a unique story about this girl who gets raped and then she gets revenge on her attackers but I'm gonna leave it there with the next title being a very similar title and this film is I Spit on Your Grave now this film follows a very similar storyline it's about a woman that gets raped redemption revenge very disturbing um, yeah out of the two probably like this one a bit better this one was a little bit better. This was, who made this film? Written and directed by uh, Mir Zachi. And yeah, this is the 4K scan on Blu-ray. But uh, I do like this movie as well. Next title is the, uh, yeah, this film doesn't get enough recognition. This film is the, the unknown Paris Hilton, Alicia Cuthbert film. And that is the House of Wax, the remake. Now, the original House of Wax is the Vincent Price House of Wax. But this film, I found this quite entertaining and I really enjoyed this film. And uh, yeah, there were some aspects of this film that were quite creepy, especially in the, uh, the, the main antagonist's home. Very, very uh, creepy scenes. Um, but yeah, having said that, if you haven't seen this movie, it differs from... The original House of Wax movie because I've seen both and I and I own both. But this film is about a group of friends that go, they're on the way to this football match, and they spend their overnight stay camping at this, I guess you could call it like a reserve, like a park. Anyways, from there they wake up. One of the cars, I I can't remember exactly. I, I don't think one of the cars uh, works. I have a flat tire or something, and then the other car. Uh, goes to the football match while a few people stay back. Anyways, they get killed off one by one. It is wax. And uh, yeah, it was actually quite um, a well-made movie. And I definitely like the uh, House of Wax, inside the, the House of Wax, the statues and the, just the, um, the way the objects were made in this movie, but yeah. Okay, and the next title has an alternate title. And this is a Paul Walker film, rest in peace Paul Walker. This is an early 2000 film and that film is Roadkill slash Joyride. Whether you're from America, Australia, or the United Kingdom, the title varies. But yeah, this stars Steve Zane, Paul Walker, Lily Sobolewski. I watched this film growing up. Um, yeah, very scary movie, and I absolutely loved it when I watched it for the first time. What it's about, the film's about these two brothers that are driving to pick up. One of the brothers has a girlfriend who is in college, and they go to pick her up. And on the way, they're having some fun on the CB radio. And on the other end is this psycho who stalks them in a truck and his name is Rusty Nail. And yeah, they organize, they pretend to be, uh, the Paul Walker pretends to be a woman and they get him to go to this hotel, but it's just a joke. And anyways, it backfires on them. But yeah, really great movie. The next one is a Rob Zombie film. And that is probably my favorite film that he's ever made. And this has, uh, th this stars Sid Haig, rest in peace, Bill Mosley, Sherry Moon Zombie, Ken Forge, Matthew Montgomery, and that film is The Devil's Rejects. Yeah. This is a, this is part of a trilogy of films. The first one was The House of a Thousand Corpses, this one, and then the, uh, The Three from Hell, I think it's called. But yeah, this is part of the, I think it's called the uh, Firefly Trilogy, something like that. But uh, yeah, if you haven't seen this movie, uh, it's pretty much about 
just a bunch of criminals on the run and they just murder people within their sights. Uh, but yeah, uh, one female, two males all riding together and yeah, they're just going to killing spree. But yeah, remember watching this film for the first time when I was, uh, I think I was in high school, really enjoyed it. Uh, just, I think the title is what got me, The Devil's Rejects. It just had a unique title. But anyways, the next title is an Australian hillbilly movie from the Australian Outback. And this film, uh, yeah, it's probably one of the most well-known Australian films ever made, and that is Wolf Creek. This is based on the real-life killings of Ivan Milat, who, who was an Australian serial killer who is now dead. But um, yeah, this film is disturbing. It's scary. It's such Jeff Jarrett, who I've actually met uh, when I was dressed up as Jon Snow for Supernova. Um, I was going to get a photo with him, but I didn't. Um, yeah, anyways, yeah, this film is about a guy and two girls, they're driving across state to go to this crater in the ground, uh, which is called Wolf Creek, and yeah, along the, when they come back from seeing this crater, the car doesn't start, this person comes along to pick them up, similar to what happened to a lot of the uh, victims of Ivan Milat. Anyways, they go to this campsite because a guy he has to fix the car. And then, yeah, they're there hostage against their will. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy, just scary movie. Now, the next title, or I should say titles, because I'm going to... I'll talk about these both. But, um, yeah, these... Uh, well, first title I'll talk about is Wrong Turn. And then we'll talk about Cabin Fever. But Wrong Turn... Um, yeah, Wrong Turn, I saw this yesterday, and it definitely holds up as still a great horror movie in 2023, and uh, definitely um, has that inbred, uh, you know, crazy maniac killers, and I love the characters in this movie, the killers, and it's just, um, just a great film starring Elijah Dushku about, yeah, a group of people in the woods, Two people get into a car crash, then they have to go find the phone, they stumble across this cabin, and then, yeah, pretty much they're fighting for their life after that. These people, these young kids, uh, against these hillbilly inbreds, but yeah. Cabin Fever is a bit of a different movie. This is an Eli Roth film who directed Hostel 1 and 2. But yeah, uh, Cabin Fever is about a, a bunch of kids at a cabin, and there's this virus, and yeah, there's this virus that is going around, and if you catch the virus, you start coughing blood, and you, your skin starts peeling. Anyways, they start, uh, hence the title Cabin Fever, they, they start getting this cabin fever and start going crazy in this cabin. But yeah, really, really great film, and um, they made a sequel to this, they remade this film, but yeah, definitely the original, I've seen the remake as well, the original is definitely the best one, the remake is a piece of crap, but yeah. Now, coming to the, one, two, three, coming to the last four titles, now I really hold these titles high as, you know, some of my favourite films of all time, but yeah, the first one uh, is John Voight and Burt Reynolds in Deliverance. Rest in peace, Burt Reynolds, just, just a huge talent, really, really great film. Everybody knows about Deliverance, a John Bullman film. This is a 70s film about a group of friends that go on this rafting trip, whitewater rafting, uh, into canoes. Uh, the canoe that is in front of theirs, because Burt Reynolds is behind the canoe that is in front of theirs, and two people to each canoe, but the ones that are in front they uh they're way ahead of them so they they take the canoe to land and while they're waiting for the other people to catch up these hillbillies that are just there wandering end up raping and almost killing one of the guys and then yeah Burt Reynolds kills one of the hillbillies with a bone arrow the other one runs off I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I've seen this but yeah and then from there uh, I guess that hillbilly went to get reinforcements because all these other hillbillies are trying to track them down and kill them. But really, really great film if you haven't seen it. Disturbing as well, disturbing. Now, the last three. 
the next one is just a classic Stephen King movie based off his short story. Or I think it was his short film. And that is The Children of the Corn. Really, really scary movie. Still scares me today. But as a kid, this film was one of the scariest films that I'd ever seen. Malachi's character. And um, Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Um, but yeah, the film opens up with... a. Uh, group of kids from a small town killing all the adults there pretty messed up and then Linda Hamilton's character from Terminator she's driving through this town with her husband or a fiance and I uh, forget it's been a while since I've seen this one as well and then anyways they accidentally hit this kid with their car and the guy driving he just finished his studies to become a doctor and he looks at the body and it looks a bit strange and then they they end up They end up, uh, yeah, just exploring this abandoned town and then they run into these kids and they're fighting for their life and the kids are from this redneck hick town and um, yeah, they're a cult of kids that worship the corn but yeah, messed up movie. Now the last two. Second last one is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the 70s. Uh, this is a film by Toby Hooper. Rest in peace, Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface in this. I did a full in depth review of this release. It's on my channel if you want to check it out. But yeah, this is by Second Sight Films. This is just an amazing movie based on the true story of the serial killer Ed Gein. It's about a group of kids that are driving to one of the kids has a grandfather who lives in this small Texas town. And they're going to the grandfather's house. They pick up a hitchhiker, things start going wrong, and then they park the car. I think something goes wrong with the car. Can't remember exactly, but yeah, the, they stay in this small town. Anyways, from there, when they're exploring this town, the kids go into Leatherface's home, and then Leatherface kills one of the kids, and then the other kids go looking for that kid, and the next kid gets killed off. But yeah, just... Really, one of my favorite horror films of all time. It's up there with my favorite horror films of all time. Now, the last one. This one, whoo, is a classic horror film by Wes Craven. Such a creative director, writer, filmmaker. Just overall, awesome, awesome contribution to the horror world. And this film, love it, love it, love it. And Michael Berryman did an amazing job. And you all know what this film is. The Hills Have Eyes. This is just, boom, the best, one of the best horror films and hillbilly horror films that you'll ever see. Scary, it's, it's just, yeah, this film is definitely so unique that they can, they can't make a film like this in today's day and age. This film, they remade this film and the remake was, was good. It was entertaining, but this one, it's a bit slower paced. The story's told better. And I think Wes Craven did an amazing job. This was one of his first films that he made. Um, but yeah, this has a runtime of 90 minutes. This is the big box Arrow release. And if you haven't seen this movie, definitely go out there and watch it. But synopsis wise, the film's about a family traveling across America. They take this shortcut, which is a dirt road, similar to a lot of these movies. They, they take a shortcut in a lot of these movies, I should mention. Furthermore, the dad ends up crashing the car and yeah, then from there, they're in the middle of nowhere, in these hills. So from there, uh, a couple of the family members uh, go off to find help and then yeah, some of them don't come back and then they're waiting for the family members to come back then they go looking for them and they run into these inbred, just deformed characters that live amongst the hills. And the reason why they're so deformed and messed up is because the government was experimenting out there in the hills, in the desert with uh, nuclear weapons, uh, bombs and other stuff. But uh, yeah, really, really great film, great horror film, scary still to this day. Great film about survival, but this is definitely number one in my opinion. And I'm gonna, end this video here by saying thank you all for watching if you've liked this video give it a thumbs up comment down below with any questions 
you may have and subscribe if you haven't because you don't want to miss out for when my content gets uploaded. But if you have subscribed, thank you all for supporting this channel, showing your love, love you all back in return, and yeah. So, this video is done. Again, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Mike starts signing off, saying I'll catch you all in the next video. <laughs> and until then, have a good night.